talk to you tonight out of the deep of my heart. Something that I felt like I'm supposed to say tonight. I got two messages. I'm going to choose this one. And sure as I do, you'll say the other one's the right one. But let me preach on the greatest of loves tonight. The greatest of love. Every one of us in this room and everybody in the world wants to be loved. All of us know that there's such a wonderful feeling about being loved and about giving love and knowing love and having love in your heart and your life. You know, you can't really live not very good without love. Love is what makes the world go around. World is what, the, the love is what really creates a beautiful world in your life. So, you know, the Bible teaches us that the love of God is, is just the most premier thing. It's the most beautiful thing. So the greatest of love is what I want to talk to you about today. I've, I started this message the other day, and, and I, I really kind of uh, teamed up with Kevin. I let him go f first, and, and then I just kind of used a part of this. But ever since that, I went back over this, went back over this in my heart and my spirit, and, and that somehow I've got to get to this whole thing and preached it. So I'm going to try that tonight. So the message is about love, a very special kind of love. The greatest of love is an unconditional love. Some people will love you as long as you do what they want you to do. It's a Sunday night crowd, so we can really say amen loud, okay? <clears throat> if you meet their expectations, then you will have their love or you will have their affection. That's not real love. That's called oppression it's called manipulation. It's called controlled. They want to control you, and they do it by, if you meet my expectations, if you live according to what I'm telling you to live and how you, you know, then you will have my love. That's what we call a Jezebel spirit. It is a controlling attitude. God's love is so deeper, so far richer, so more eternal. It is unconditional Romans 5, 8 says, in it while I was a yet a sinner, God loved me. God loves you at your worst. God loved you when you was breaking all the rules. God loved you when you were the furthest thing from being an object of love. God loves you with an amazing kind of love. While you were the meanest, the stinkiest, the honoriest, the worst of the worst, God loved you. Say amen. Aren't you glad that God is that kind of a God? Some people think that God is such a mean God. He's out to get you. He's going to hurt you. He's going to, he got your number. He's waiting on you to mess up so he can really nail you to the wall. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God that sent his son to the cross to die for you. God that I'm talking about is a loving God, a merciful God, a kind and benevolent God, one that shows mercy for me and you. Say amen. amen. God loves you. <clears throat> Would you turn to somebody and just tell them, God loves you. Romans 5, 8, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. God loved us and sent his son, his one and only son, to die for us. Can I just tell you, God loves sinners. The Bible spells that out in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believeth upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. That means that God loved each of us enough that he would watch his son bleed and die his death on the cross for us. The gospel makes no distinction between races or classes or generations. God emphatically states that he loves all humanity. Could I say? Spell this out to you right now. All lives matter to God. Everybody matters to God. There's not one of us imp more important than the other one. I don't care who you are. God loves you as much as he does me. God really loves you. Please understand that when you leave this building, I want you to know God loves you. God's for you. God's with you. God wants to help you. And so you know that. God loves every one of us. How many can accept that? Now I'm going to stretch your heart, okay? God loves the adulterer. God loves the robber and the thief. God loves the addict. God loves the homosexual. God loves the prodigals. Of all the human race, doesn't make any difference who they are. Man judge them. Man sometimes hates them. 
but the Bible says God loves every soul. He doesn't agree with what we do. He doesn't condone the sin of our lives, but I can tell you God loves every one of those people. We are so good, even in the church, we are so good at judging one another. Man, we're good at it. If we could just get that good at loving each other, we could whoop the devil. Sometimes the devil don't even need any help. We just kill each other. <clears throat> we just destroy one another. I wonder how many of us could just try our best to be like God and to love souls, love people. I have a sister. Well, next to the youngest sister, Charlotte. She is a sweet girl. And I love her. I wish everybody in the world could be like Charlotte. She loves everybody. I don't care. You can hurt her feelings. You can break her heart. You can do anything in the world to that poor girl. And I'm telling you, she will love you and love you and keep on loving you. I've never seen anyone quite like her. She encountered some trouble when she was nine years of age. I remember going to the hospital, and she was unconscious and couldn't come out, of, out from under the, the medicine that they'd given her to sedate her for the heart procedure. It has forever affected her life. But that is one heart that knows what and how to love. I admire her, and I love her, and how precious she is to our family. But she loves everybody. She's got a heart like God. And I just wonder how much we could change our world and our life if we just love like God does. We can condemn each other. We can cut each other down. We can slice each other and dice each other up. We can be mean with our words and our judgment and quick with our tongue. But I just wonder how many of us could just say, God, from this moment on, make me like you. Help me to be a lover of the souls of men and one who cries out and intercedes before God really quiet in this house. I want to go back over this again. God loves the adulterer. If he didn't, some of you wouldn't be here. God loves the thief. If he didn't, some of us wouldn't be here. God loves the addict. God loves the homosexual. God loves the prodigals of all various human, you know, sides of human life. God loves you. God cares about you. The Bible says this, all have sinned. Say it out loud, all have sinned. Louder, all have sinned. Say it out loud, and that means me. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God has come into this world to save us and deliver us. Jesus died on the cross for us. One Sunday morning, I was to preach a message that God had given me. And just as I walked around coming to the pulpit, used to I would come around the back way and come out on the platform. My usher caught me around there and said, Pastor, we got a, we got a guy here that uh, I'm really worried about. said he came in, he's in a, dressed in a business suit, and he's very determined looking, very mean looking. And this is his very words, I come to kill sinners this morning. And he told me that just as I was coming to the pulpit. And the only thing I could say, at that time we had two highway patrolmen. And I said to them, you tell those two highway patrolmen, one set on one side and one on the other side. And this is what I said. If he makes a move that is suspicious at all, do their best to take his head off. <clears throat> the man of faith and power. <clears throat> well, it wasn't faith, it's power. <clears throat> Guess what my message was? So help me, my message was, God loves sinners. His message was, I come to kill sinners. I preached with more fervor and more anointing than you can imagine that morning. <clears throat> Wondering what the results was going to be, either in my sermon or after my sermon. When my sermon was finished and I give the altar call, I'll never forget, I stepped down over here and I saw him coming. And those two highway patrolmen was right with him, 10 foot behind him. 
I thought, boy, you guys ought to be trained better than that. You know good and well you need to be up with him, not that far back. You're putting me way out on a limb. He came right down to where I'm at. I stepped out across the altar and reached out to shake his hand, and he took my hand. These are his words. Preacher, I come this morning to kill sinners in this house, but I am a sinner. Would you pray that your God will save me? So help me, that's the words he spoke. And I prayed for that man. God touched his heart. I've never seen him since. I don't know where he went, but I know one thing. God touched his heart that morning. I'm so glad that God loves all of us. I'm glad that I didn't have to prove myself to God. Matter of fact, the only way I could prove myself, I'd have to prove that I was a sinner. But I didn't have to prove that I'd be good. I didn't have to prove that I wouldn't break any more laws. I didn't have to prove that I'd break any more commandments, not break any more commandments. I didn't have to prove that I'd go to Sunday school or church every day. God didn't put a bunch of stipulations on me and say, if you act a certain way, I'll take you in. God didn't put me on probation for the next six months or a year. God took me as I was, a sinner, wretched, lost, poor, miserable, broken, hopeless, lost without God. And Jesus loved me enough that he forgave me. He wrapped his arms around me. He received me into his bosom that very day when I repented of my sin. God loves sinners. You may be here tonight and you may be addicted to drugs. You may be here tonight and you may be involved in any kinds or all kinds of activities of sin. I want you to know God loves you just the way you are. God loves you. You are a sinner and God loves you. He's proved that love. There's nail prints in the palm of his hand. There's a scar on his side. There's there's scars on his brow. He took the beatings on his back. God proves how much he loves you. The greatest of loves. You may be listening to the message and you may be trapped in some kind of miserable situation that you feel hopeless. But you hear this preacher, God loves you. God has a way out for you. God can make a way of escape for you. God loves you. You may be listening right now and you may feel like there's no hope at all. But I want to tell you there he is. When you've got God, you've got enough. When you've got God, you've got an answer. There's hope for you. God loves you. And with all things, all things are possible through him. Everybody here in this church are sinners saved by the grace of God. If it wasn't for the grace of God, you'd still be as corruptible and lost and miserable. But by the grace of God, you've been changed. Say amen. Well, there may be one or two that's better than the rest of us, but I tell you, most all of us in the same class, we're lost and on our way to hell. And God saved us. Say amen. God's special love, the greatest of love. And secondly, and this is what I want to get to, God loves you so much. You can come to him just the way you are. But this is what I found out. He won't leave us the way he found us. He won't leave us the way we were. He's got a world-shaking change coming into our life. God won't leave you the way he finds you. God will change. I want want you to think of something. If God had left Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden in their sinfulness and allowed them to eat of the tree of life, do you realize they would have lived forever in sin? Because the tree of life would have given them eternal life. And the sense of that is that they would have lived in deep, steep sin for the rest of their life. God won't leave you the way he finds you. When you accept the love of God, a change is coming your way. No one had to give me a counsel and say, well, did this happen to you? Did that happen to you when I got saved? I knew immediately the sin burden rolled away. I knew immediately that the great heaviness of my heart would have been changed. I knew my sins were forgiven. I knew the blood had been applied to my heart. I knew that my name was written in the book of life. I knew that I knew that I knew that God had made a difference in me. He didn't leave me the way I come to him and the way he found me. He forever changed my life. Hallelujah. 
I would have been miserable and hopeless and troubled and broken and twisted and perverted and full of sin and darkness, but he didn't leave me that way. I was a changed man. Glory to God. My old habits began to drop off. Do I hear it? Amen. The things I used to do, I didn't want to do anymore. Sin wasn't something I was interested in any longer. I wanted to go to church all the time. I wanted to read my Bible all the time. I wanted to pray all the time. I wanted to worship all the time. I wanted to be with other Christians all the time. I wanted to, wanted to memorize verses of Scripture. Something got a hold of me. Something changed my life. He didn't leave me the way he found me. He made some difference and changes in my life that forever, ever changed me. He won't leave you the way he finds you. He will forever change you. Oh, hallelujah. When Christ is invited in any of our lives, he makes us so much, much better. Amen. Man, God can make you a new, improved. Glory to God. You just don't know how good you can be. Glory to God. You just don't know what God can do for you. The Bible said, all things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. That's what God does. He loves us so much that he gives me a new life. He washes away my past, forgets it, forgives it. Hallelujah, it's never ever to be remembered against me ever again. And this is where we come up with that thought or that idea, we're born again. We're born brand new. I just want to know how many in this room has experienced that you know that you're born again. Glory to God. Born again, the greatest thing in the world He won't leave you the way he finds you. When I come to God, I was a miserable, lost, wretched soul. Man, was I ever lost. My mother had been fasting for seven days for me. My mother loved me into God. She prayed and fasted. I left college and went home that Friday Mom greeted me with open arms of love. Later that evening, she would fix supper for all of our family. We sat down at the table, and I noticed Mom's plate was not there. All the rest of us ate and talked, Dad and the brothers and sisters, but Mom wasn't at there. She had slipped away after fixing the meal. She had fixed For us, she slipped away to the bedroom to get on her face before God. Saturday morning breakfast, Saturday at lunch, Saturday evening, all weekend long, every meal, my mom would prepare the meal and slip away to her prayer room. Sunday evening, I tried to leave and go back to college. I got in my car. I was hurting so bad in my heart. I knew what mama was doing. I knew it was for me. How am I going, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? I wanted to turn the ignition over and, and go to college, but I, I just couldn't do it. I, I stopped. I got out of the, back out of the car, walked back in the house, went to my mom and put my arms around her. I said, Mom, listen, I really love you. I want you to know I love you so much. She said, I know you do, son, and I love you. I think it was twice I tried that. The last time, mom looked me in the eye and she said these words, son, when will you quit running from God? I drove all the way back to Durant. In my heart, I was weeping my eyes out. And God, what am I going to do? How in the world can I get saved? What in my life, the way I'm living it, what can I do? How can I get through? What can I do, God? That went on day after day after day. On Thursday evening, I went to a friend of mine and I said to him, Can you take me to church? I want to get saved. He said, Walt, this is Thursday. There's nobody having church. He said, Wait a minute, let me call and just see. You know what? There's having revival at First Assembly of God Church that week. Reverend Justice from Colorado was preaching the gospel. Little short man, didn't look like he weighed 130 pounds. I'm telling you, he was preaching all over the platform. Good Lord, he told every preaching story he knew, preached for every verse he knew. I thought, Lord, would he just hurry up and get through? I got to get to the altar. 
You know what? When conviction settles on you, when God's listening to a mother's prayer somewhere, angels start moving, the Holy Spirit starts moving. Glory to God. It was the time for decision for my life. God wooed me, drew me by the Holy Spirit. That Thursday night, I surrendered my life to God. Could I tell you, my life has made one big drastic change that day. Glory to God. He won't leave you the way he finds you. He'll change everything about you. It's the amazing love of God. God gives us a blood transfusion. God gives us a vision and dream for a new life. What we were never able to do when we were in sin, now we're all of a sudden we can do because of God's love. He gives me a new nature, a new desire, a new passion. The things I used to do, I didn't want to do anymore. You know, the devil, he'll set you up. I guess it was the next day a fellow drove up to my apartment at college and he said, hey, Walt, I've got this, I've got that. Let's go, man. And he was one of my best friends. I sat down in his brand new 1963 and a half Ford car. Still smelled brand new inside. His mom bought it for him. I said, Terry, listen, I can't do this anymore. I'm drinking from a different bottle. I'm listening to a different tune. Jesus has come in my heart. I know you don't understand it. These are my words. I know you don't understand it now. But you are my friend. And I'll never mistreat you, but I can't do what I used to do. There's a new person living inside of me now and changed my life. Glory to God. God won't leave you the way he finds you. He'll change you. And the change will always be for the better. I know, friend, listen to me. There's healing from a drug-addicted life. There's deliverance from alcohol. There's deliverance from drugs. There's deliverance from that perverted lifestyle. God has a better life for you. Some time ago, a dear friend of mine, daughter got into trouble. And I went to the jail to visit her. This is many, many months ago. And I walked into that place and I'd made a request a couple of days before I got there if they would please get, let me have an opportunity to see her and they did and I watched this girl through her life grow up and we talked small talk for a little while and I greeted her and wanted to know how she was doing if everything's all right if there's anything I can get for her and then I looked at her with tears running down my face and I said these words are honey those clothes don't belong on you. This house is not the house you're to live in. God has something better for you than what this is. This is what the devil wants to do to you. God's got a better life for you than this. Hallelujah. And I believe that with all of my heart. I don't mean that in a condemning way. I just want you to know when you get with God, he'll change stuff about you. He'll give you a better life than you ever dreamed possible. He can take you from way down here and he can elevate you to a life way up here. God can change you, my friend. God wants to. He loves you. That's why he loves you. He knows there's something better for you. And he can get you there when nobody in this world can. Won't you stand with me, please? When Christ changes us, we will, want to, we will have a desire and a hunger to be like him. He loves us so much that he reorders and replans our lives. Your lifestyle will change. Now listen to me. Your friends are going to change. Do I hear an amen? Your habits are going to change. Your behavior is going to change. I got tickled. I, I remember the story. Billy Sunday, what a great evangelist many years ago, walking down the street of Chicago, I believe it was, and a drunk comes staggering up to him, and he just couldn't hardly walk. He was so drunk. And he staggered right up, and he looked at him, and he said, you're Billy Sunday, aren't you? He said, yeah. He said, Billy, good to see you. I'm one of your converts. And Billy looked at him and said, well, you must be one of mine. You sure ain't one of the Lord's. <clears throat> when God meets you, he changes you. I've already seen it happen too many thousands of times. God changes your life. He don't leave you the way he finds you. 
I've seen drug addicts. I've seen alcoholics. You know, they get trapped into thinking life will never get better than this. That is a lie from the pits of hell. You're about to be changed. You're about to have a life, a life like you never dreamed ever was possible for you. God delights in taking impossible situations and taking somebody and making something really great and extraordinary out of them. God loves it. God delights in it. I was preaching in one of the eastern states and I was to catch an, uh, an airplane and come back home. I preached that message and gave the altar call and people filled the altars up. I quickly left and flew back to Oklahoma. In probably a year and a half or two years, I walked on a platform to speak one night and there was a band playing. Out of that band, the bass player comes strutting across the platform. And he grabbed me around my neck and started hugging on me. And he said these words, Brother Walt, you don't remember me. But I remember you. I can almost tell you every word you said that night, you, that day you preached. He said, I was a drug addict. I was a heroin, heroin addict. They brought me off the street. A person just invited me to go with them, brought me into the house where you were preaching. And I gave my heart to God. My mom and dad are respectable people in that city. My dad is a pharmacist, and I forgot what he said his mother was. But I was an addict. My life was broken. I was miserable. I was an embarrassment to my family. I was hopeless. But he said, I came in that morning, and I heard your words, and I gave my heart to God. And I just want to tell you, I thank you because it saved my life. He said, now I'm traveling all across America telling other young people there's hope for you because of the love of God. God loves you. God loves you. There's hope for you. There's help for you. God loves you. Two things I want you to always remember. Number one, God loves you. Number two, he won't leave you the way he finds you. He'll change you. He'll change you. You remember that demoniac of Gadara in the New Testament? Jesus went to there, that part of the the, the geography there was nothing but this caves and cemeteries and, and just rough wilderness area. He went there for one person, one man who was possessed with demon spirits. And the Bible says Jesus delivered him. Everybody say delivered. Delivered, delivered him. The next verse says this, and he was sitting at the feet of Jesus, fully clothed and in his right mind. That's what Jesus can do. That's what miracles God has for all of us. He can do that for you. Would you lift your hand to him? Father, thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you for loving us just the way we are. You know that we are sinners. And you don't wait for us to become perfect for us to be loved. You love us just the way we are. But you won't leave us that way. You will change us and to make us into the person you want us to be. God, I thank you for that. Oh, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for that. Bless these people as we surrender to your love in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I want to do this for you today. I want you to join me and just say the, the prayer of the sinner. And I hope that you will let Jesus Christ come into your heart and change your life. God's got a good plan for your life. All you need to do is invite him in. And the Bible said he'll come in and live inside of you. So pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I am a sinner, that God loves me, and that God wants to save me. So I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and has come to save me. I accept him right now as my Savior and my Lord in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God, for saving my life. Amen. God bless you, my friend. And may the Lord bless you and keep you all.